This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to another exciting build from the new company, Meg. So, why don't we get started with the Multipurpose Humanoid Destructive Weapon Artificial Human Evangelion Unit 1 from the popular anime series Neon Genesis Evangelion. So without further ado, let's get to it. Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudes, another unique build from your boy Utaku Builder. And if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome. So in the last 27 years, Bandai has been playing it very safe when it comes to the perfect grade IP. Sure, we got the perfect grade on Leash, tons of variants of the Unicorn Gundam, and maybe slight tweaks of the Red Frame of Stray Gundam, but we the fans have been dying for a updated version of the perfect grade Evangelion Unit 1. Sure, we got the real grades a couple years back, but we have been dying for a proper, a redesign of the Evangelion Unit. And thanks to the good folks from MAG, we finally got the Evangelion Unit 1 revamp definitely not a perfect grade but it definitely surpasses the perfect grade due its dimensions but before we get into that let's talk on briefly on what this model kit presents for starters this is really not designed for casual builders which i strongly disagree a lot of the pieces themselves are already pre-painted so assembly is very easy to do now when it comes to accessories this model kit is packed to the brim with tons of weapon accessories 10 pre-posable hands a great led light system and to add icing on the cake it actually comes with its own water slide so no more sticker decals as for the first side of the box you get a wonderful illustration on what you can do for this massive model kit, getting a tight shot of the entry plug, a nice little representation of the LED light system illuminating the Evangelion's core, as well as the eyes for the Evangelion, which is great. Although I'm a little concerned with the eye color for the Evangelion, but the white one will do just fine. You get a nice tight shot of the actual inner frame of the Evangelion showing the spine system, which is really reminiscent to the actual real great Evangelion. And as for the weapon accessories, you get a nice shot of the Spear of Cassius, a nice Gatling gun or a mini gun, the actual Palatin rifle, which is great, and then a whole slew of the pre posable hands, which is great. It's a shame you can't do any kind of articulation, but that's totally fine when it comes to holding weapons this massive. So, without further ado, let's take a look what's inside the box. And as always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual. Definitely gets a good heft to it. Really shows that this is the premium quality model kit that you definitely invested a lot of money into. But as for the first page, it gives you a nice tutorial on what tools you're going to need. A good pair of snippers. It also comes with its own guide on how to apply the water slide decals, which is absolutely great. But here is where the instruction manual truly shines. Everything is color coordinated. So if you want to tackle the head, shoulder, legs, and feet, you can do so without having any kind of issues, which is great. And judging from what how everything is beautifully sculpted especially on the teeth it's absolutely phenomenal how much love and attention went into this but what's definitely catching my eye on this model kit is the led light system particularly the power supply so this model kit does not come with lr44 batteries so you need to purchase those separately either from your mom and pop shop or get off of amazon that shouldn't be a design factor by this model kit it's very easy to find but the spine system is very problematic it looks great very simple plastic what i can tell from it but it doesn't look like it can actually sustain this amount of weight for a model kit this big. Once again, next shot gives you a nice tight shot on how to assemble the torso, while at the same time giving you a small glimpse on how the interframe system really works, and at the same time give you a great representation on what you can do for the actual weapon accessories. Now the weapon accessories are absolutely great. They have taken the next step of actually adding like an actual spring load feature to the actual Paladin rifle, which is great, definitely not needed, but they didn't implement it onto the actual machine gun itself, so that's not a bad thing. Once again, nice tight shot of the progressive knight. The entry plug itself looks great, so it interconnects to the back, and a nice wonderful detail of the actual entry plug that sits in the back. Now this entry plug is actually great because it actually acts as the switch in order for you to turn on the Evangelion LED light system. So no external switches, no dongles like you would expect from the original perfect rate, A plus on that. And as for the second to last page, you get a nice shot on how to put this model kit in dynamic poses. Now the one thing that's definitely missing is the action base. So you're gonna need to purchase that separately if you have the spare money to do so. And then last and finally, is the final page on how to apply the water slide decals. Now, there aren't an insane amount of water slide decals for this model kit, which is totally fine, but if you have some spare one lying around for your previous model kits, that would be greatly appreciated for this particular build. Now, when it comes to the runners, they are definitely bountiful amount in here, but what's definitely concerning me is the fluorescent color that's on here. I know there's like a preference for people that like the traditional pastel purple versus the metallic purple versus like the dark purple, so 
If you are comfortable doing some custom painting, there's your options right there. Now when it comes to the reposable hands, these are beautifully sculpted. Definitely shows a great sense of motion when they're beautifully articulated and the actual green runners that come bounted with this model kit are a little bit on the soft side, so I'm definitely gonna be hitting this up with a nice metallic sheen. A handful of yellow runners that are gonna sit around the knuckle parts, parts around the feet and the actual shoulder blades around the necks. A nice tight shot of the actual weapon accessories, which is great. Once again, has a weird fluorescent sheen on it, so I'll definitely hit that up with a nice flat red to make that really pop out. As with additional red runners in here, they're totally fine, but definitely gonna require a great deal of custom paint, especially around the teeth. I'm not a big fan of the red teeth, so I'll probably hit that up with a nice soft yellowish white to really make them pop out, just like we see here in the promotion work on the actual instruction manual. But again, if you just wanna leave them red, that's totally fine. And now comes the inner frame part of the actual mecha itself. Once again, this is absolutely great because you are no longer dealing with the rubber suit from the original Perfect Grade. I have to stress this. This is an excellent alternative when it comes to building a Perfect Grade because a lot of people, including myself, were literally losing their mind when it came to putting on that rubber suit for the original Perfect Grade. Next runner is that we're gonna get a small assortment of pieces for the entry plug itself, followed by the actual umbilical cord connector that sits in back of the Evangelion, as well as a tight shot of the Palatin rifle runners. Follow up with the actual knuckles that sit on top of the Evangelion's hands, which is great. Not a big fan of the silver pieces, so I'll definitely hit that up with a nice flat gray. Followed by the Gatling gun, or minigun you want to call it. Definitely looks great. Definitely requires a lot of love and attention when it comes to painting it. You get the horn for the Evangelion, you now get nice clear pieces for the core, and then you get clear pieces for the eyes. Now the eyes themselves is definitely going to prove problematic, but I love the actual light piping that's in there. When you actually take the LED light system itself, it's really, really simple, but at the same time, really, really well done. I like the fact that it's only on a two color system, which you get one color that is gonna be red, and then one's gonna sit that's gonna be white. Now, when this actually is positioned correctly behind this actual clear runners, it will actually illuminate the eyes correctly how you would see in the anime. But at the same time, the LEDs themselves aren't that bright, so it's definitely gonna require a little bit more of a custom flair to it. Now, I need to touch on briefly is the inner core system. These pieces are gonna be for the mid spine, and this piece is gonna be for the actual leg units. It's very reminiscent of what you would expect from like a real grade or even a perfect grade inner frame skeletal system, but they emulated their own little system to it to make it look really good. And then last and finally, we have the water slide decals. Definitely shows these are high premium quality water slide decals that sits great. But another thing I need to touch on briefly is this resin residue. It has like this weird waxy Vaseline texture on every single runner. Do you guys have a favor? Wash every piece before you build this model kit. And then last and finally, we have the green runners. Now these look great. Wish they were a little bit more of a neon green, but they'll definitely get the job done if you're doing a straight up build. So without further ado, let's get started building the Evangelion Unit 1. As always, I've already taken the liberty of cutting out every single runner that I'm going to be focusing a lot of my attention on, especially around the entry plug and the jawline. But the area I want to touch on just briefly is the LED light system. So these are the batteries you're going to need to actually power on the Evangelion when it's fully assembled. But the actual LED light system is beautifully well designed. Very simple. You got a breathing LED light for the core, and you have one steady LED light for the eyes that is using a fantastic light piping system. Now the effect itself won't look really dynamic with bright light settings, but when you turn off the lights, the effect looks really, really damn good. Now, the one area I'm going to be really concerned is the actual brightness of these LED lights. So I'm going to actually, actually cut these pieces out and put my own Evan Designs flare onto them.
Okay, so now that these pieces are prime painted, it's now time to get these guys ready with a more authentic green. Now, personally, I'm going to go for more of a fluorescent green because I think this makes the pieces pop out a little bit more. But this is actually going to act as a base when I apply a actual glow in the dark paint on top of them. So when it came to glow in the dark paints, I was really hesitant on finding the right kind of product. So thanks to my good friend at Gumpla Joe, he recommended SMS glow in the dark paint. Now the wonderful thing about this paint, it is airbrush ready. So when you use this stuff, lower your PSI down to 25, not 30, because you'll blow through this up really fast, and then apply a generous amount onto the surface. What you want to do is apply close to three to four coats of this particular paint product. As you can see here, it softened up the original green texture in front of it just a little bit to the point where it looks saturated but that's not going to be a problem what you want to do is create a nice thick layer in which the paint can sit on there correctly so once i get these pieces fully done they're going to sit in the sun and dry a little bit once they get basked by the glorious sun's radiation you're going to get this beautiful glow in the dark effect so once again thank you so much gunpla joey i really do appreciate the support my dude they work great now when it comes to a small little detail i really want to put an emphasis on the evangelion teeth just like what i mentioned on earlier in the video i don't like the red but i love the way how they are shown in this promotional look on the instruction manual so i'm gonna be using something like i believe it's called dirk tan from tamiya which is like a acrylic based paint and that's going to give me like the right kind of white texture i want for the team <laughs> Okay, so before I start installing every single piece for the head, I want to put a lot of love and attention on the eyes themselves. Now, what I mentioned on earlier in the video, I do like the LEDs from this particular market, but they're not bright enough. So what I want to do is have each individual eye have their own independent LED light. Now, the one thing that's going to be very concerning with these LED lights, they are bright, but they're going to create like an awkward twinkling effect. So what I'm going to end up having to do is gently sound down the very front part of the eye to create like a diffusing effect, not too heavy, but just light up to the point where it creates a nice effect. So once you get it just right to the same kind of consistency that you want it, then you're gonna actually be able to create the effect like you would see on the actual instruction manual. Once again, I'll be positioning these LED lights on each individual eye, and then to lock them into place, I'll be using some Bob Smith's glue to make sure they are properly secure. But wait, the magic does it in there. Since I have a spare red chip LED light from Evans Designs, I'm gonna be using this particular chip LED light that's gonna sit in back of this clear water that was originally designed to illuminate the eyes so that way i can actually create a two switch system to bounce between the warm yellows and the bright reds so that way when the evangelion goes into berserker mode i can have the two options between the two
spine is properly installed, it's now time to do some modifications on the LED light system. Now, I was originally going to go with like a simplistic LED light system, but I'm going to end up using their power supply to make this work. So what I end up doing is taking off their LED lights, and then what I want to end up doing is using this power supply and connect it to a three switch system. So what this essentially is going to make me be able to do is toggle between the warm LED lights for the eyes and then toggle over to the red LED lights that are going to be for the Berserker eyes and for the Evangelion's core. The setup is relatively simple, but if you want to know how to do it correctly with the three switch system, hop over to Evans Design's website, they have you covered. Now when it comes to actually putting the switch, it's going to be directly right underneath the power supply battery. So I'm going to actually need to drill a small little alcove in there so that way I have the ability to toggle between the two switches in order to turn it on and off. Now, the actual primary switch of turning on the LED lights is going to still be inside the entry plug so everything works out beautifully at the very end. Alright, now that that's properly installed, it's now time to test out the LED light system. So once again, I'll be using this power supply switch system that's actually plugged into the entry plug to power on the LED lights. But once again, I have it on a three switch system. So when I toggle it over to the right, it will turn on the Evangelion's core and the Berserker eyes. Toggle it over to the left, we'll turn on the eyes for neutral mode. Now by off chance, if you don't have the batteries actually installed into the power supply, it's always good to actually have a backup. So I'll be installing a male and female connector that will be behind the actual power supply. So that way when I connect it to the umbilical cord cable on the action base, you'll have a nice cohesive flow between the two. So this is actually a really good backup. So once again, I'm not going to do anything too crazy with these particular weapon accessories. I'm just going to brighten them up with a more of a metallic look to it and more of a military green for certain key areas. As for the actual lance itself, I'll be hitting it with more of a bright flat red. And for the Gatling gun, I'll be hitting it with more of a nice metallic gun metal color.
Well, my dudes and dudettes, we are literally at the home run stretch here, and this process is going to be very simple. Once again, I'm going to be ditching this metallic purple and going for more of a flat purple for the actual hands themselves. As for many legs and shoulder blade sections, I'm going to hit those up with a nice flat tire black to make them not too dark, but at the same time, not too gray. And then as for the actual green runners, once again, going to be doing the same kind of sequence like I did with upper body and get those properly painted.
Okay, now that the hands, arms, legs, feet, upper body, head are now fully done, it's now time to tackle the small little details on this mall kit, and that's going to be doing some like chipping and weathering. I'll be putting the water slide decals on later on, but now I'm going to put all my attention on the transport platform. Once again, this is just something that I want to do a little bit more flair to it because I just didn't want to have the Evangelion alone by itself. But what really perked me to actually work on this platform is watching a YouTube video that uh, really inspired me to go to the extra step, and he did a beautiful rendition of of the Evangelion launch sequence when he fights the very first angel for the first time. So that was the kind of key reason why I bought this plus at the same time, it just seemed kind of appropriate to have this added feature to this particular market. So I'm gonna be utilizing the exact same LED light structure system that he has on his platform and his video. I'll leave a link right at the top so you guys can check out that short video. It's very well done. And then I'm gonna be utilizing it in the exact same way as best as possible. But at the same time, LED power is very limited. So I need to work what I have on my spare time. All right, my dudes and dudettes, as this video is wrapping up, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions on this build. And dudes, there is so much to unpack here, and I'm going to try my best to explain it in every facet detail I can possibly can. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Is this a proper successor to the original? I mean, the very first perfect rate that was released by Bendai. Without a doubt, yes. But there are some caveats with this particular beast of a mecha. For starters, this thing is tall. Definitely surpasses the original Perfect Grade by a long shot, both by articulation, both by height and dimensions. This particular Evangelion is on the more skinnier side, so it definitely favors the four feature late films that came out almost three years ago. Not really focusing more on the anime um, uh, alteration or the alternative version that we got a couple years back in the 90s. So this is more fitting for the original movies. Now, with that being said, this kit is phenomenal when it comes to articulation. It is flexible around the elbows, around the knees, around the head, has a great swivel. The upper body itself is where I'm really concerned because the skeletal system that is in the upper body is a bit flimsy and it has some sort of like a ratchet system where you can do a front and back crunch, but it's very, very loose. So if you're trying to put this guy in dynamic poses, be prepared for this guy not to stay in proper positions because it's not really designed to stay in, I guess you can say, in a dynamic pose. I can see that there was a lot of inspiration when it came to the actual inner mechanics of the actual spinal column for the Evangelion from what they learned from the real great and trying to implement on a perfect great successor. So I feel that Meg did a really good job on trying to implement their own style, their um, unique engineering flair to it, but I feel that they just missed the mark just a little so maybe tighten it up a little bit in the future builds maybe do another version of the spinal design and you should be good but since it's like really flimsy and really loose it's gonna create like a weird wobbling effect around the upper body but probably by far the most concerning part in this model kit is plastic fatigue and the areas that i'm really concerned about is going to be the ankles the forearms the knees and maybe even key areas around the shoulder but the most alarming area that i'm very concerned is going to be around the ankles and the forearm and the tricep and bicep area there's like this small little plastic peg that sits in between those two little sweet spots that interconnects to the tricep and bicep area. But when I was literally putting in simple dynamic poses, it broke. I don't know if it has something to do with the temperature in the room. I most certainly didn't get any paint or any kind of like um, glue in that area. I think it just had something to do with just plastic fatigue. But more importantly, when you try to move that arm, it is without a doubt insanely tight when you're trying to move it up and down. So. Keep that in mind when you're working in dynamic poses that this kit will be prone to breaking if you put it in too many damn poses. So it is limited, but at the same time, if you just don't rush it, you should be good. That is just one alarming area. But the one thing I have to give this company a lot of props is its LED light system. For those fortunate few that actually built the very first, the original Evangelion Perfect Grade model kit back in the 90s, and even now, know what the limitations are when it comes to the LED light technology. It is literally a power supply that's connected to a little junction box that is now funneled up through a cable, which is the umbilical cord that plugs into the Evangelion to light up the heads and the Evangelion core. 
definitely ahead of its time when it first came out but it was very much limited to what it was supposed to do back in the day it's not by far means uh, like the worst part but it definitely made things a little difficult when it came to put in dynamic poses so it's really really nice that they actually went that extra step of making their own independent power supply system for the upper body to light up the head and light up the core i would have loved if they actually adopted a feature where you can interchange the led light systems from a bright white to like a warm yellow to even like a bright red when it goes into berserker mode but again that's a that's a small little detail that i'm greatly happy to look, overlook because these guys knocked out of the part when it comes to just looks articulation design aesthetics and even when it comes to the overall look for the evangelion they knocked it out of the park so meg deserves a lot of love and respect when they actually put the effort into doing something this dynamic so now the big burning question you guys are asking yourself, is this worth the purchase? And keep in mind, I had a lot to reflect on this model kit because it was supposed to be done a month ago and it's literally taken me almost two and a half months to get this video done. So who is this really targeted for? Casuals, not so much if you're just doing a straight up build. This is really designed for people that are like in between of experienced builders and expert builders. So for experienced builders, you're gonna like the fact that you're gonna do some custom painting, some custom weathering. You're gonna love the actual water slide decals that come with this bad boy. Um, the pricing for this model kit itself is above $300, which I feel it justifies it just right because you're getting the Palatin rifle, you're getting the Gatling gun, you're getting the preserve, um, progressive knives that come with this Evangelion as well as um, a good, solid LED light system, which I, once again, I have to stress, that's really, really great for the price range you're getting for this model kit. Now, the thing that really pisses me off is the action base. It is sold for the exact same price for the Evangelion. You do not get any weapon accessories. You don't get any fancy LED light system. You're essentially buying a bona fide piece of plastic in which you can put your Evangelion on top of that. So do yourself a favor. Do not buy this action base. Wait for this bad boy to go down in price for like $100. He should be solid because from what I've seen on the internet, they actually made a dedicated action stand for this Evangelion, which I believe is being sold for like $80 to $100. Again, wait for that to go down in price because now the company's getting a little greedy when it comes to this particular brand. So in conclusion, phenomenal kit, fantastic articulation, by far worth the purchase you guys will not be disappointed i promise you that and with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this video do appreciate the guys love and support for the whole entire year and i will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build No